Hello everyone, today we're going to visit one of the most mysterious places in the UK. We are in Glastonbury today, a small town in England that is packed with myths and legends, from the sacred to the profane. Today we're wandering around on all the sacred and magical sites. And of course we're going through a little bit of history, maybe a little bit of dark history as well. Two thousand years ago, at the foot of the tour, there was a vast lake called Innis Witrin, the Island of Glass. It is partly from this that the association of Glastonbury with legendary Avalon comes about, as in Celtic folklore, Avalon was the Isle of Enchantment, the meeting place of the dead. Glastonbury's first inhabitants were Stone Age farmers, and the village is thought to have been a site of pre-Christian worship perhaps because of its location by the Tor. There is a form of terracing around the Tor, which has been interpreted as a maze based on ancient mystical pattern. If so, it would have been created four or five thousand years ago, around the same time as Stonehenge. There is a ruined medieval church at the top of the Tor, the tower of which remains. First up is Glastonbury Abbey. Glastonbury is linked to, to Arthurian legends and the Holy Grey legends. Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy follower of Jesus, brought the body of Jesus here after the crucifixion and buried in his tomb. When Joseph arrived in Britain, um, he is said to have landed on the Eye of Avalon and climbed up to Werihal Hill, now called uh, Wirral Hill. With these 12 followers, the same as the, uh, the disciples of Jesus, he established the first monastery at Glastonbury and built the first church. The story during the Middle Ages is somehow connected to King Arthur and the story of the Holy Grail. Joseph of Arimathea uh, is the keeper of the Holy Grail, which is the cup that Jesus used during the Last Supper. The cup that caught his blood at the crucifixion and was entrusted to Joseph of Arimathea. The Arthur legend. I heard this bedtime story before. And sent it to his followers in Britain. Later on, this story was a little bit elaborated. Joseph of Arimathea took the Holy Grail himself over to Glastonbury and he buried it somewhere under the tour, the gateway to the underworld but a spring now known as Chalice Well um, began to flow and the water was supposed to bring eternal youth to whomever drank it. And that kind of started the search for the Holy Grail from the Knights of the Round Table. Some proclaimed that King Arthur was buried here after he died at Battle of Baden Hill, and some others say that he died near Cadbury Castle, who was brought here and laid to rest here on the grounds of Glastonbury Abbey. The monks claimed to have found his grave in 1191. In the year 1191, the bodies of King Arthur and his queen were found on the south side of the Lady Chapel. On the 19th of April 1278, the remains were removed in the presence of King Edward I and Queen Eleanor. The tomb survived until the dissolution of the abbeys in 1539 by the hand of Henry VIII, who apparently destroyed everything. Henry VIII, with this dissolution of the monasteries, did a lot of damage, culturally-wise. I mean, every abbey I've been to, there's not a lot left. Some say that a dark figure in, in full armour with red eyes is seen here on the ground of the abbey, and that is to undermine the memory of King Arthur. Let's keep our eyes peeled. <laughs> this is absolutely beautiful.
We're now making our way to the channel as well. Also known as the Bloodwell. It's apparently on the site where the bale is thinner. That's what they say. And it's the best way to tap into spiritual and healing properties of water. Sounds good to me. Well, I can see why they're calling the blood well. The chalice well water can be drank here in small quantities. What can possibly go wrong? Yeah. This for metal. So this is apparently the wellhead. It is proven that the water is not rainwater, but it comes from deep within within the earth. And the symbol that you can find all around here is a Versica Pisces, an ancient sacred symbol on two interlocking circles. It symbolizes a union of heaven and earth, or spirit and matter and it appears to have the garden. This is also a gateway to the spirit world. You can hear the whispers in the trees. And apparently the water from the well does get rid of what no longer serves, which is amazing really here in the shadow of the tour. Alright my friends, it's time to get some of this gear off and climb. Going up the tour as it's getting dark, what can possibly go wrong? It's one hell of the view though, and we are only halfway. Glastonbury Tor was both an Isle of the Dead and an Isle of the Blessed. Two pagan deities were known to reside here and both were related to the underworld. The fairy king Avalok is said to have presided over the town. Little is known about him, although it is believed that he was the father of the mother the Smodron. He used the Tor as a gateway here, where the souls of the dead could pass freely. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fun times. And that is the most haunted pubs in Glastonbury. We're going in for a wonder before the carnival starts. The Georgian Pilgrim was built in the 15th century to accommodate pilgrims visiting the Abbey. There are many ghosts attached to the building and it's one of the most haunted hotels in Somerset, if not in the country. Unfortunately, it's too busy tonight to pick up any ghost vibes, so we'll definitely come back. Well, you guys, that's all for me for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give us a thumb up. And if you find yourself coming back to this channel, please subscribe and set notifications on for future videos. I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.